you know, they say, oh, you know, don't kill the snake. No, the only good snake is a dead snake. I know they say good snakes are bad snakes, but okay, if it slithers, it dies, okay? That's just how I feel about it. But it was a water moccasin on my property. And when I went back in the house, I was like, God, what was that? And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, perfect love casts out fear. When you love something more than you fear something, you get free. One day I was sorting laundry in my house. We had been to a picnic and I just came home and dumped all the kids' stuff into the laundry and I was sorting laundry and I picked up one of Jason's little shirts and a snake came out of the sleeve of the shirt, went across my hand and into the laundry pile. All because God loved me. I screamed, ran into the other room and then I thought, Jane, get a grip on yourself. It's probably a belt. You need to like, it's not a snake. There can't be a snake in my laundry in my house. So I went back into my bedroom and I did the army crawl across my bed, you know, and looked down into my laundry. And you know what? No, it was a snake in my laundry in my house. It was this, this about this big, actually. Let's be honest. And so I ran and called my husband who was at the office and I said, get out of the second house, which was get home, there's a snake in the house. And you know what he said to me? He said, what kind of snake? That is such a man question. I said, what kind of snake? What kind? Just get home and get it out of my house. So he came home, caught the snake. It was a pygmy rattlesnake. Oh, no, I couldn't just have a garter snake in my laundry. I had to have a pygmy rattlesnake in my laundry. And it was like... This season, all of this happened in about a six-month season because God wanted me to confront the fear in my life that was going to keep me from being bold. One day we were out in the shed. I didn't go in the shed. Let me just say, I, don't, I never went in the shed. There's things in the shed. I called it the shed. Okay. And we were out, and we had to, like, we were changing over summer clothes and getting Christmas stuff out. And so I would stand outside the shed, and my husband would stand inside the shed and move the boxes. And I'd say, I think it's that one over there, or I think it's that one over there. And, um, and every time he would move a box, you know, in Florida, a bug would run or something would, you know. And, and I was just like, <gasps> And so every time he'd move a box, I'd go, <gasps> And every time I went, <gasps> he went, <gasps> Like, what? What? And I was making him crazy. He goes, Gene, just, could you just not do that? I was like, I'm sorry. And I, and I put to work Pastor LaRue's teaching where she taught me, I bind myself in Jesus' name. I bind myself in Jesus' name. And I mean, I, I was really honestly trying to confront this fear. But you know, it's like when you're in that time, it's like everything feels so sensitive. And so, <laughs> so he picks up the next box. And he turns around and he says, is this the box you're looking for? And out of the front flap of the box, there's a snake, like just weaving. He can't see it. Like he's holding the box and he's like, is this the box? Is this the box? And I'm like. Oh. And he's like, what is the matter with you? I said, it's a snake. And he goes, ah! you know, <laughs> he goes in and gets his gun, kills it, you know. By now I'm kind of catching on. God is trying to help me get free. How many of you have been through a process where God helped you get free of some things by making you face them, okay? So, one night, my husband was fixing the dishwasher, which I have to say that when my husband fixes things, that kind of ranks right up there with my fear of snakes, okay? It's, it's, it's pretty terrifying when he starts fixing things. And so, it was, it was dark. It was, it was night, probably 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And he said, babe, listen, I need you to go out in the shed and get me this tool. And I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, he was under the sink. That's right. His hands were full. He says, babe, I really need you to just go do this. And I'm like, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So I went out to the shed. I banged on the door. 
I opened the door and said, snakes, get out of my way. I'm coming in. By now, I'm like taking that boldness on. Okay? So I go over to the toolbox, and I bend over. It's on a shelf, and I bend over to get the tools out of this box. When off of a higher shelf jumps a frog. Now, I'm not afraid of frogs. I grew up in Hawaii with lots of frogs, Florida with lots of frogs. However, I did not know what it was, and it landed on my head. And it hung on, on my head. I didn't know what had me, and so I'm in the shed going, I mean, if, they, if we'd had Funniest Home Videos, I would have won like $10,000, okay? And I knocked it off, and I was like, oh, it's a frog, okay? I'm not afraid of frogs. But it was like God was pushing me to deal. Why? Because Jesus wants a bold church. You say, what does this have to do with anything? I'll tell you what had to do. One day, I was sitting on my couch, and Jason was about five years old, and he came running into the house, and he was, he was crying hysterically. And he says, Mama, Mama, there is a big snake in the yard, and it looked at me. I want you to know something rose up inside of me. That snake scared my baby. I got up off that couch. I went out the front door. I went down the steps across the yard, and I walked right up to about a five-foot water moccasin. And I was about four foot from a five-foot water moccasin when I went, what in the world am I doing? Have I lost my mind? And at that time, one of our neighbors was out there, and he had his gun, and he came over, and he shot the snake. You know, they say, oh, you know, don't kill the snake. No, the only good snake is a dead snake. I know they say good snakes and bad snakes, but okay, if it slithers, it dies, okay? That's just how I feel about it. But it was a water moccasin on my property, and when I went back in the house, I was like, God, what was that? And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, perfect love casts out fear. When you love something more than you fear something, you get free. What do we love more than what we fear? And the Lord said to me that day, he said, you know what? Your mission Your ministry, your assignment in life is to be bold. How in the world do you think you're going to confront spiritual darkness if you're afraid of natural darkness? And how do you think you're going to deal with spiritual snakes if you're afraid of natural ones? He said, you need to let me set you free so that you can go set other people free. Amen? And so I want us to stand up this morning, and I'm going to pray for you. Because I believe it's an hour of boldness. You know, God has been working on his church. God has been building his church. And for the last 500 years, just about everything Jesus has done in his church has been to empower us internally. To get us saved, sanctified, justified, consecrated, holy, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with power, receiving divine healing, receiving the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know we're in a new day. And it's not just about what God's doing in you. It's about what God wants to do through you. Jesus said, I will build my church. I will embolden my church, not just so that you can be free inside, but so that the very gates of hell cannot prevail against you. The very gates of hell, that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And in another translation, it actually says says it this way. Whatever you forbid will be forbidden. Whatever you allow will be allowed. What are we forbidding and what are we allowing? Are we being the ecclesia? And I'm going to challenge us for just a second. Or are we just being the church? I don't want to denigrate the use of the word church because Jesus died for the church. But, the, but the, the, the way that the word church has been used is just to be a gathering of believers who practice personal devotion. 
who are being conformed to the image of Christ. That's really good internally. But you know what Jesus did? He changed the world. And so we're going from a church mentality to an ecclesia kingdom mentality. So we need to get free in ourselves so that we can go out there and set a world free. Come on, set a nation free, set a community free, set your neighbor free. Come on. This is what we've been commissioned to do. So, Bishop, could I have you pray for the people? Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind just lifting your hands, and I'm just going to have, I'm going to hand Bishop the microphone and have him pray for you because he's a, he's, I, I get my boldness from him. So, <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> you know, you have to realize you've got the authority. Jesus says, behold, I give you power. <laughs> and authority over all the power of the enemy, right. and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you. Now, I want you to think about the thing that bothers you, or you may have one of the change situations. I had a situation when I first started pastoring at 19, and I was in this great big church. I had to go all the way through the church to the back to use the bathroom, and we were in the process of casting demons out of people every week, and I'd go out in the, in the it's dark. I didn't turn all the lights on, and when I was standing back, I get the shivers and I jump into the room. One night I said, "Why am I afraid?" And I started walking back and forth, rebuking the devil. I couldn't shut my eyes. And I said, "I'll shut my eyes." I said, "What's the difference? The dark and the light. If the devil's going to grab you, <laughs> he's going to have to grab you anywhere." <laughs> so I started taking bigger steps and bigger steps, and I battled. And I got walking, shut my eyes, and pray and decree, and walk through that dark and feel as good as I did during the day. Amen. You have to break these situations that come in. So I want you to think about, huh? I want you to think about anything that makes you get a little nervous, anxiety, and fear, and say, no more. It's going to go. As I pray, I'll take the authority over that in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we take, you, we take authority over every spirit and fear of all of its cousins and in-laws and outlaws. Everything it deals with, nervousness, anxiety, insecurity, and, and, and fears of, of what's going to happen, what's going to go right now in Jesus' name. We, we command you, go right now. We root you out. And you no longer will be an oppressing, defeating situation. We delivered from fear. God has not given us fear. We'll take nothing that brings fear. We'll rebuke every fear and we'll live victorious over it in Jesus' name. For we'll be an emboldened, courageous, lion rolling church. And we will roar against the enemy and defeat every power of hell in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we dedicate ourselves to be a part of your surge that you're bringing into the earth, Father God. A surge, a wave of your glory. Lord God, the electricity of your power, your dunamis power flowing through us. And God, that we will rise up and be the emboldened ecclesia, Father God, that have a mission to, 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 to push back the gates of hell, declaring that the gates of hell will not prevail against us, in, uh, us individually, but they will also not prevail against your ecclesia, against your legislative body, God, that are speaking to the heavens, speaking to the earth, and transforming communities all over this world. We decree it today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.